My name is Jim Lee, and I'm the minister here at Unity of Las Vegas. So glad you can join us. If you're joining us for the very first time, I just want you to know my our hearts are open to you. Welcome. So we are in the midst of uh, what it is to be a spiritual pioneer, a what I would call a light worker, or what we would call a truth student, or just what it is to be an awakened being on the planet today. What does it take? What are the characteristics? Well, today we're going to embrace something that seems weird, and that is we're going to embrace chaos as part of our spiritual practice. So the lesson title today is Cultivating Wildness, the Role of Chaos in This New Order. Are you ready for this? Well, the order for the service today is we've got special reading by our beloved Don. We have wonderful music by Michelle, and she's singing the good news. I will be doing the lesson, and then Lisa will bring it on home as we are looking at having a mystical experience more than an intellectual experience so we could have it live in our bodies and who we are, and we can take it with us. So today, get ready for cultivating your wildness and the wildness of everything that's going on, the role of chaos in the new order. Hello, my name is Don Fouts, and I serve Unity Church of Las Vegas as prayer chaplain. I'm also on the board of trustees. And I am thrilled, if you are watching this before June 13th, we are back to live services, and I'm thrilled. I look forward to seeing you at Unity on Rainbow. Today's special reading is Divine Order. That's the word for today. The affirmation is, I declare divine order and know all is well. Whether I am praying for myself or someone else, the first thing I affirm is divine order. It is also the final affirmation that concludes my prayer time. I let go of all concerns because I have absolute faith that all things are working for good. I don't have to know the answers or force anything on my own. My job is to pray and trust that the highest and best good for all concerned is manifesting in an orderly fashion. The answers I am seeking will come in the perfect way, in the perfect time. Spirit is within me and with everyone for whom I pray. Divine order is present in every person and in all situations. I am at peace with what is and what will be knowing Divine order is unfolding. And from 2 Peter 1, 3, His divine power has given us everything needed for life. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Don. My favorite part of that is where you said, my job is to pray and trust that the highest and best good for all concerned is manifesting in an orderly fashion. That's such a liberating and freeing statement. Great job, buddy. Well, good morning, friends. It's wonderful to see you here as well. We want you to know that we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we see the Christ consciousness in each of you this morning. If you have yet to do so, Hit those subscribe and notification buttons below and share us with your families and friends, won't you? You can enjoy and share all of our Posi Music videos as well. Check out our Posi Music playlist and pretty soon we'll have a meditation playlist that you can enjoy and share with your friends and families as well. I've reached out to Michelle for our special music segment this week. 
She's been an inspiration and one of my greatest friends over the years, and she continues to this day to be a valuable member of this church. In a world of divine chaos, it never hurts to have some good news. This is Michelle Roll singing one of her original posy music tunes entitled, The Good News. Enjoy. Are you listening? I know it's hard to hear Above the noise and the friction That plays up to your fears For everybody that is trying To make you feel all alone There's so many more vying To bring you the blessings of home The good news is song we all can sing You don't need to ask permission when you're spreading your wings Life is not a competition, a souvenir to lose or win Listen to your intuition, the voice that shines from within The good news is there's love The good news is Yes, thank you, Michelle. We're ready now to step into this talk today. I want to start off by saying this. There are three things that typically make us very uncomfortable 
on this sojourn called life and, and through this human experience. And there are change, unpredictability, and the lack of control. And Lord knows we've had plenty of it recently. Oh, my goodness, lots of change, like lots of unpredictability. And certainly, if you're anything like me, you're not in control. And we've got an attachment to these things. We've got attachment to, I would say, just having life come out a certain kind of way. We really like to have our hands on the wheel of life. We really like to be in control. I uh, got the image of Snoopy flying an airplane. It's just like, we got to feel control. Well, when change occurs and things seem to be uncertain and unpredictable, uh, seems like a wildness is is in our consciousness or in the air. And I just want you to know that spiritually, there's a way to look at all of this in which we can cultivate wildness in the midst of chaos, and it can take us to a different place than we thought. And that is divine order. So the spiritual definition and the mystical definition of divine order is this. Divine order is change, unpredictability, and a lack of control. That is divine order. And it's always been here, and it's here now. So the universe, as we know it from the very beginning, some 13, 13.772 billion years ago was in divine order. Stephen Hawking, um, a theoretical physicist and a cosmologist, has this quote, and I like it. He says, if the rate of expansion one second after the Big Bang had been smaller by even one part in a hundred thousand, million, million, the universe would have re-collapsed before it even reached its present state. What science is saying, that at the very beginning, what we thought was chaos and confusion and all of that, in the midst of, the, of that is a precise order that is so perfect it has to be called divine. And if it wasn't perfect, exactly perfect, we wouldn't be here now. So there's something that's going on here. And I just want you to know that the universe was created in order, is now in order, and will be in order. There's something going on here. And it escapes our normal way of looking and our way that we have been taught. So we're going to realign ourselves with divine order, which is, allows what I would call the evolutionary impulse of the, of the universe that is always present. And once we align with that, something else can occur in our life other than pain, suffering, and misery that seems to be present a lot. Just want you to know, in order for this natural evolution of life to occur, there must be change. Everything, in fact, must change. Don't fear it. Love it. Affirmation time. So the affirmation we're going to breathe in today is, I relax into the divine flow of divine order. Say it again. <sighs> I relax into the divine flow of divine order. Now, you may think that's for you, which it is. But I'm embracing this too because it, it really is something that resonates with me so it allows something to occur. Now, there was a, years ago, there was a song, and it was called Everything Must Change. And there was a, 
line in it that I like. It says, everything must change. Nothing remains the same. Everyone must change. And no one and nothing remains the same. In fact, he goes to say, the young become the old. Mysteries do unfold. Because that's the way of time, nothing, and no one remains the same. So wildness is change, unpredictability, the other aspect of it. What does unpredictability mean? Well, the definition of unpredictability is not predictable, not able to be known in advance. And <laughs> this steps into the realm of uncertainty, which we really don't like. A comedian by the name of Gilda Ratner has a quote that I like, and she says, I wanted a perfect ending. Now I've learned the hard way that some poems don't rhyme and some stories don't have a clear beginning, middle, and end. Life is about not knowing, having to change, taking the moment and making the best of it without knowing what's going to happen next. In my own words here, what I'm saying is we use a spiritual muscle to accept what is, let go of what was, and with faith, step into what will be. Let's do our affirmation again so we can get in sync and harmony with this. I relax into the divine flow of divine order. There was a famous Indian dancer, matter of fact, no, she's still alive. Her name is Sudra Chadran. And she began dancing at four years old. But something happened when she turned, just before she turned 16, she was in an accident that was very unpredictable. And she lost her right leg. Now, she per persevered against everything and even though this was a unfortunate thing, after she lost her leg, she was still committed to dancing. Now, what happened, she got an artificial leg and she practiced and she became an even better dancer than she was before. And she became world famous for the one thing that most people believed that she could not do, and that was dance. She accepted life's challenge, set an example that nothing can defeat you but you, and then she opened up and allowed something magnificent to occur. So remember this. Life is very unpredictable, but in fact, that's a good thing. David White he has a quote that I like, and he says, What you can plan is too small for you to live. What you can live wholeheartedly will make enough plans. Affirmation time. I relax into the divine flow of divine order. Well, what I would like to incorporate now is a, is a couple of spiritual practices, and one of them is the three don'ts. Number first, don't. Don't be afraid in life. Just trust love's ability that's already within you. Next don't. Don't accept or allow self-pity to rule instead of loving yourself and just who you are. Third, don't. 
Don't allow unpredictability to paralyze you. Rather than that, allow love to show you who you are, and more importantly, whose you are. And so keep in mind, if we desire to blossom like a rose in a garden, then you and I must learn the art of adjusting with the thorns. Life is unpredictable, but it is the source of the king-size and queen-size life that we all want to have. Affirmation. I relax into the divine flow of divine order. So we have change, unpredictability, and now we're coming on the last one. Lack of control. (laughs) Oh, my goodness, lack of control. That just seems like most of my life, but lack of control. It's present. How can we be saved by those things in life that are out of our control, which overtake us, overwhelm us? In other words, in other words it, sometimes it appears to threaten to undo us. I heard about a flight instructor was sitting next to his student in a single-engine plane, and he asked him, well, I think it's time to take her in for a landing. Are you ready? The student said, okay, no problem, let's do it. While they were approaching the unway, runway, the instructor happened to look over at the student, and he noticed the student was calm, poised, And he had never seen a student so calm, so poised, and not nervous at at all. In fact, most of the time when they get ready to go for their first landing, they're wide-eyed and swelling, sweating bullets. But this young man was not. He was cool as a cucumber. The instructor said to himself, my gosh, he's going to make a great pilot. And sure, they came in for the landing. And, but when they landed, it hit the runway with a thud, bounced up into the air about 50 feet, bounced back down on the runway, went off the runway, and then flipped over into a cornfield. The instructor, still strapped into his seat, looked over at the student and said, Son, that was by far the worst landing I've ever experienced. What were you thinking? And the student looked over and him said, What do you mean, me? I thought you were landing the plane. Now that young pilot may not have been in control. Clearly he wasn't. But he was in control of himself. When things appear to be out of control, we discover that self-control is where the power really is. When the storms threaten us, we can turn and surrender to the one who is stronger than the condition that's out there. We, we're not going to be able to avoid the storms. As in fact, they happen to everybody. You can be good, you can be bad, and you can be indifferent. In other words, stuff is going to hit the fan. You know what I'm talking about? But if it does, something else is available to you that is in your control. In the 23rd Psalm, it says it promises not to support us in avoiding the shadow of death. God is saying, I am with you as you walk and go through the shadow of death. We must trust in this loving vibration that is, in fact, in control. And the way we do that is tap into an awareness that's within us. So as we move forward here, I'm inviting us to cultivate this wild wildness that aligning us with change, unpredictability, and a lack of control. 
This wildness is calling us to be of service to more and more expanded expressions of ourself. And the more that goes on with all of the conditions that, go, that, that is happening in life, we can tap into that love that's already within us. We can navigate this change, but more importantly, we can cultivate everything that's going on so that we can have the life that God intended and what you came here to be and to do. I love it, Jeff Carrera, and from his book, uh, The Soul of a New Self, has this quote that I like. And even more importantly, it is the recognition that on the whole, in spite of life's unpleasant, even traumatic aspects, it is still a blessing to be alive in a beautiful world Riding this roller coaster of being human, it starts, it starts, it starts from the recognition that the life you're living is already the life your dream of your dreams, as long as you look at it with new eyes. So I'm inviting us now to look at life with new eyes, with all the change and what unpredictability and the lack of control and what appears to be chaos. I want us to look at new eyes with this. And that is take on this chaotic embrace as an opportunity for ever-expanding love so that you can be aligned with the universe, which is what we are that has been here from the very beginning, is now, and will forever be. Affirmation time. I relax into the divine flow of divine order. And now Lisa will allow us to experience it on a mystical, personal way so that we can incorporate it in our life. Let's go, Lisa. I love the David White quote that Jim mentioned. What you can plan is too small for you to live. What you can live wholeheartedly will make enough plans. It brings our awareness immediately to the understanding that being fully alive occurs largely beyond our control, beyond the smallness of our intellectual capacities. In our humanness, we naturally crave the familiar orderliness of things, the recycling of old patterns, and the perpetual reaffirming of the way we believe things to be. But to tap into what is most alive in us is to be in service to more and more expanded expressions of love flowing through us as us. It is to make peace with divine mystery and allow all of our perceptions to be reconfigured. We surrender to a kind of spiritual wildness that dances in and out of conventional thinking and behaving, expressing the freedom of full alignment with the universe that always turns human order on its head. Typically, wildness does not have positive connotations. It suggests a way of behaving that is chaotic and dangerous, that needs to be brought into familiar order. In this segment of our series on being a spiritual pioneer, we are exploring the possibility that through the larger lens of love, this kind of wildness is the new order therefore becoming something desirable, something for us to nurture and cultivate. We cultivate this wildness whenever we allow ourselves to be brought into that sweet spot of surrender where all the ways we are tethered to outdated patterns of being and thinking become visible to us. We find ourselves at choice point here, which lens will we look through to determine our reality? 
Will it be the smaller lens of this is the way we've always done it? Or will it be the larger lens of unlimited possibilities and freedom? For our meditation today, we will journey to this sweet spot of surrender. And there we will upset the apple cart and discover our true home within the chaotic embrace of ever-expanding love. There we discover that the life plans of our intellect, however clever, are no match for the life plans of spirit, awaiting the opportunity to flow through us in magnificent fashion. So I invite you now just to bring attention to your breath, finding a very comfortable way of sitting and being. Just become aware of this beautiful exchange of air between your body and the universe. This beautiful exchange of air with the universe being out there and you in here. Softening any boundaries between the universe, freedom of the flow, between you and the universe and you as the universe. Now I invite you now to bring attention to your heart. Just imagine that you are actually breathing in and out of your heart. And notice as you do that, the beautiful rising of this heart energy. Breathing in its warmth and its radiance. And its ability to embrace all. This beautiful embracing it all quality that the heart has. And sense into its tenderness and its vulnerability. Allow all the ways you are deeply touched by the world to be present. Your dearest relationships, both the joy and the pain of them. Your deepest held beliefs about love and what's true. Allow the fullness of your heart to be here and appreciate all the varying colors and textures that are here in this expanded heart of yours, its beautiful complexity. Sense now the allurement of love that is ever present inside of your heart, calling you forth into something larger a calling into a new way of being, a new order, something untamed and free, something wild. Say yes to this calling and surrender into the exquisiteness of the universal heart. Receive the welcome embrace of its wisdom and love. Melanie Kulura says, Spiritual freedom embodies a liberated soul. Release it all. Just let go. Melt into the freedom of this timelessness, this open spaciousness, the rhythm and pulse of this universal heart creates a new order, undomesticated, non-conventional, yet harmonious and synchronized, radically new, and yet strangely familiar.
Any perceptions of chaos in this new order are shifting now to the aliveness of a new harmony, a new synchronicity, and a new interconnectivity. You know you are at home here. This is the home you've always longed for. Rumi says, You have escaped the cage. Your wings are stretched out. Now fly. Soar in the freedom of this spacious heart. Sense into the expansiveness of your fully extended wingspan. There are no obstacles. Nothing is in your way. Soar in this full expression of your divinity. Untamed, wild, and free. Knowing in your heart of hearts that this is the way it really is. Ah, thank you, Lisa. Great meditation. I love that quote. You have escaped the cage and your wings are stretched out. Now it's time to fly. This is really good. And thank you, Michelle, for wonderful music and Don for the meditation. So as we wrap this up, I just want you to know it it really is a heart-opening experience to have you join us. Also, you can join us at 11 a.m., on Sundays for our special fellowship time. If you are in the need of prayer, Silent Unity, always there, 24 hours, seven days a week to take your prayer request. Also, you may contribute um, to this ministry so that we can keep on doing what we're doing by going to the website and hit the donate button or even by phone. You can even text it in. And so as we Step forward now. I just want you to know with a, with just a heartfelt, sincere gratitude for you being here, but a heartfelt prayer that is transformative in nature for ourselves and for our planet. I'd like for us to say it together. This is a good way to end, all, end our service. The light of God surrounds us. We are the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love of God. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. God bless you. Have a wonderful, chaotic life. (laughs) The good news.